Hey guys, welcome back to my Sent to Us series. And today I am continuing the theme of things that I probably should have taught you guys earlier in the series. And in today's video, the theme is in output redirection. So you've probably seen me do some sort of output redirection throughout the series so far, but I definitely wanted to give it its own video in this episode today. So let's go ahead and get started. Now to illustrate this example, I'm again going to use SSH. I don't know why I keep deciding to use this as an example, but you know what, I've been doing it, I may as well continue doing it. And I'm going to cat out the Etsy SSHD config file right here. And of course permission is denied, I knew that, honest. So I'm going to recall that command with sudo and put in my super secret password and you know basically I just printed the entire content of this file and you know what it's quite long isn't it so I'm actually looking for a very specific thing so I'll clear my screen and then I'll recall the previous command and what I'm going to do is pipe that into the grep command and then what I want to grep for is port I'll press enter and it's using port 22. That's the default for SSH. I knew that, but the point is, if I'm looking for something very specific, I can cat a file and grep a particular thing of that file and only show that one thing. And that's basically an example of piping output from one command to another, which is the first thing I'm going to talk about today, because it's a very common thing. Now honestly, I didn't even need to pipe output to do the same thing. I could have just done this. I could have ran sudo grep and then I'll just type port and then the path. And it does the exact same thing. Note output redirection is required. Grep can be used by itself. You don't actually need to pipe things into grep, although that works just fine. And everybody does it, you know, you don't have to do it. That's just an example. So then what happens if we run a command like this? I'm going to run echo, and then I'll do hello. Obviously you know that by itself is simply going to echo whatever I type there. But what if I redirect that to another command? And what I'm going to do is use the greater than symbol to redirect that to myfile.txt. I'll press enter. And if I cat the contents of that file, We can see that it has exactly what I sent to it. I basically sent the output of the echo command to my file.txt. And similarly, I could just do ls-l, and then I can use that same greater than symbol, and then I'll just call mine my file2 this time. And if I cat the contents of that, we have the output of the ls command in that file. So what happens then if I just run that command again and again and again and again and again a bunch of times, right? Well, let's see what happens. Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. And the reason for that is because when we redirect the output of the ls-l command with a single greater than symbol, it's going to overwrite that entire file which is why you have to be very careful. If you were intending for the output to go to the end of the file and you wanted to preserve what's in the file now, well, you just blew it away. So that's the one important thing I want to tell you guys is always be very careful with output redirection because you can actually destroy very important files. But what I can do here is use two greater than symbols Now let's see what that file contains. And it contains the output that many times, as you can see. So that gives you an idea of overwriting a file versus appending. Again, if I was just to basically run this with a single greater than symbol, and then I cat the file, as you can guess, I blew it away. And it now only contains the output of that most recent command. Now, what this constitutes is actually the concept of streams. There is standard input, that's a stream. There's standard output, and there's also standard error. So there's three of these. And it's very important to understand the difference, but thankfully, it's a very easy concept. 
Now standard output is actually something that you guys have been using all along without even knowing it. So if I run ls-l, you know, as you already know, it basically just gives you the entire directory listing of everything in your current working directory. We've run this probably a hundred times by now, or at least it feels like it, but that's standard output. If you run a command and it prints something on your screen, it's standard output. It's that simple. So if I was to run again echo and then hello, the word hello is printed to standard output. Again, anything that's printed to your terminal is standard output. And then also, I mentioned in a previous video, if you echo dollar sign question mark, that gives you the exit code of the previous command, in this case zero. Zero means success. Anything other than zero is not a success. And this was a successful command because I simply told it to print hello to standard output, which puts it on the screen. It was able to do that, so that was a successful command, so it gets the exit code zero. Now, if I was to run this command again, echo hello, but I just fat finger something and I just don't type it correctly, well, let's see what happens. And you already know if you watched a previous video where I covered this, it gives me an exit code, in this case, 127. It's not zero, that's failure. Now that's standard error. That was an actual error because the command is not found. And now what's confusing is it is being printed on the screen. So it is showing the results in standard output. So it basically showed me in standard output that, well, there was a problem, but this is standard output. But it's also standard error because there was an error. And if something is registered as an error, you can basically do something different with it, which I'm going to show you in this video, but I wanted to show you guys the difference. Now, when it comes to standard input, it's actually a little bit more challenging to show you guys because it's not something that we generally run on the command line, although we do actually use it every day, I'll explain. So anytime you are being prompted to enter some information, for example, when you run sudo, you are being asked to enter your password. You are entering your password standard input. Anything that's input from the user is standard input. It's information going in. Now, obviously, when you are just running simple commands, you usually won't redirect something to standard input. There are some examples that I'm going to give you that's going to show you what that actually looks like in practice. It's just not as common as standard output and standard error. Now, one example that I'm going to give you guys is MySQL dump. Now, I'm not going to give you guys a course on database administration or anything like that, but as a Linux administrator, you will most likely find yourself at some point dumping a database into a file and then restoring it. I'm not going to go over MySQL dump or even MySQL in its entirety or anything like that. I'm just going to show you what the command would look like if we were actually doing that. Now with the MySQL dump command, essentially you would have dash H and then you would have some URL to a database. Obviously this command won't work and you don't have to try it. I'm just showing you an example. You'll have a user and you'll have a password, but you don't type the password here. You don't want people to see it in the clear. And then basically you will give it a database name. And since we want to create a backup of a database, we will use standard output, a single greater than symbol. And then we will call it something like mydb.sql, for example. And you know, just so you know, you don't actually need the space here. It works without that. It just is seen as cleaner by some people, or maybe most people or some number of people that it just looks easier to read this way. So that's why people put a space there. But essentially, this is just an example command. And right now we are illustrating standard output because we have a database and we're going to connect to an external database. I type the URL here, whatever that is, the password, or excuse me, the user. And then dash P means I intend to type a password. It will ask you for the password, which is another example of standard input because it's asking you for something and then the database name, the one I want to back up, and then I'm going to redirect it into a dump file. Now, when you want to restore such a backup, the command will look something like this. So 
First of all, it looks very similar to the previous command, doesn't it? And, you know, there might be some syntax errors with this command. That's not the point. It's just an example. And, of course, I'll type the DB name here. Now, if you are an expert in MySQL, you know you can avoid typing the database name. There's, there's a way to automate that. Not going there, but what we're going to use this time is standard input because I want to take the contents of a file and use that as input to the MySQL command. So that's when I use the DB dump file, whatever I named it. And I already forgot what that was, but basically my DB dump, whatever it is, dot SQL, whatever you named it. And basically what we're doing is we're taking the contents of this file and this is the symbol for standard input. We're using this file, the contents of this file is input to the MySQL command, which connects with dash H for host, which, you know, you type the URL again, like I mentioned, the user, and you will type a password. So you just type P, it'll ask you for that. So it's gonna ask you for the password standard input. And then it's going to use my DB dump as standard input. This file should already exist if you were actually creating a database backup and restoring it. And it's going to basically restore that into MySQL. So basically you're getting an example of standard input. Now this is not something you will use every day, but it's something that you definitely will use during your career as a Linux administrator. So now I'm gonna give you guys some examples of output redirection. Maybe you want to redirect standard output a certain way, or maybe you want to direct standard error to a file. You could basically handle these streams independently when it comes to your commands, so I'll give you an example. The command I will use to illustrate this is the find command, which is very awesome. And what I wanna do is look in the Etsy directory for anything, let's just say name. So we're gonna search by name and I wanna search for anything that ends in .cfg. So I wanna find any files that ends in .cfg in the Etsy directory, I'll press enter. I get a bunch of permission denied errors. Now I did get some genuinely good output. I mean, look at this, we have a file right here that meets that criteria. We have another one right here. We have one here and we have one here, but we have a bunch of permission denied errors because some of the directories in Etsy are not readable by normal users. Now I could have ran sudo and this would work, so I'll clear the screen. And I'll just put sudo in front of this. And then my password. And you know, it works just fine. I don't see the errors. But without sudo, I'm going to see errors because I don't have permission to see everything. So I expected that to happen. So what we can do is handle the standard error independently of standard output. So what I will do is recall this command and I will type two and then greater than just like that. And then I'll pipe that to dev null. I'll explain in a moment, but I'll press enter. And you know, I didn't use sudo. I did get my results here. So the command worked just fine. Now, obviously I'm missing some information because there's some directories I don't have permission to search in, but I didn't get any errors. Why? Well, actually standard error is designated by a two. That's important to know when you want to redirect standard output, standard error, handle standard input, you wanna know what the number classification is for each. And right here we can see that I was looking for two, like anything that is code two, I wanna basically redirect that to dev null. And dev null is like this place where anything that goes into it is never seen from or heard from again. It's basically the same as deleting something. So if you redirect something into dev null, it's just gone. Now, similarly, standard input is zero. Standard output is one. And again, standard error is two. So this allows us to do basically anything we want to separate standard output and standard error. Again, I have this command right here. I could redirect this over to, let's just say errors.txt for example. I'll press enter. And again, we get the actual results, but if I cat the contents of errors, we can see that those are the errors that I would have received on the command line or in standard output. I would have seen those errors had I not redirected standard error somewhere else. I redirected standard error to go into errors.txt rather than being printed on the screen because I didn't want to see those errors. I just wanted to see the good information, but I still wanted to make a note of the errors 
in case I felt like maybe um, those do matter and I do want to investigate that a bit, I could actually see, well, what wasn't included in the search. And I know that because I have that in errors.txt, so I can refer to that now. So it's really important to know how to differentiate standard input and standard error. Now, let's go ahead and try a different example here. So I brought this back. And again, we are redirecting standard error. Again, that's code 2 into errors.txt. But I want to redirect uh, standard output to, um, let's just call it success.txt, for example. I'll press Enter. And there's no output, no standard output, nothing. And we could check the exit code here. It's not zero, so there was a problem. We know there was a problem because the exit code is not zero. There was an issue, but we don't see any problems on the screen, right? So we can just cat errors again. It's just going to contain the same text like it did before. And then we can also check the contents of success, and it's going to show the ones that were successful. So I was able to split the errors into a file and then the successful output into its own file. So I can basically separate that however I see fit. You might be wondering, well, why does this matter? And you know, it's all up to you, the administrator, on whether or not you have a use case for this. If you're writing scripts, for example, you might want the errors to go into a file that you can check later because maybe you have a batch processing job that's handling a bunch of directories, files, or something like that. But if there's any problems, you want those problems to be logged somewhere. So you might actually want standard error to put those in a log file of some kind, and you would then be able to see what it might have a problem with. So that way you don't have an issue that goes on notice. So you can redirect the errors into an errors file and then have a success file that shows you the directories, files, or whatever you're working with that actually were handled successfully. So that's why you would want to separate those and it's important to know how to do that. Now, even though the concept of streams and output redirection and all those related things is a relatively simple concept, it does get a little bit more advanced from here. So I'm going to link a How To Geek article in the description below that's actually going to give you a lot more information and you can read that article. It has a ton of info about this, probably more than you would ever want to know if you want to go ahead and explore this concept further. But for me and for this video, that about does it. You know how to handle standard output, standard input, you know what that is. You know how to handle standard error. You know that we have the number classification of each. You understand the concept of streams. If all of that is true, then you are all set and you are ready to go to go on to the next video as soon as I have that uploaded. I will see you there. Thanks so much for watching.